Hello everybody, this is Nick from Arcade-Hunters.com, and today I had the chance to go to the Nintendo World Store in New York City for their Tatsunoko vs. Capcom Ultimate All-Star event. While I was there, I had the chance to sit down and talk to Seth Kellyan. While my camera takes pretty good photos, the audio quality on the video flat out sucks. So I ended up using an old digital audio recorder I had. While it sounds pretty tinny, you can make out everything that we're saying. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this little interview I had with Seth Killian. And I would like to thank Seth once again for his time. He was very nice and uh, had a chance to talk to me. I would also like to thank Capcom for putting on this event and bringing the game out to North America. And be sure to check out the rest of the Arcade Hunters site. I'm going to have more videos of the game in action as well as an overview video of the entire event. Thank you very much for watching and here's the interview with Seth. All right, hey everybody, this is Nick from Arcade-Hunters.com, and I'm here at the Tatsunoka vs. Capcom pre-launch party event with Mr. Seth Killian. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Now, Seth, when did you start playing Street Fighter? Did you start with the original Street Fighter 1 with the pneumatic punch pads, or were you just like Street Fighter 2 and that was it? I admit I did actually play Street Fighter 1, but I did not like it. Yeah, <laughs> same here. I thought that what game do you think, stuck. What do you think it would be like if they kept the punch pads? Uh, I think we wouldn't be here right yeah. now. It's <laughs> So, so, you started doing the Evo fighting tournament. How was it the day that they called you and they said, hey, we want you to come work with us and be an advisor? Uh, that was a, it was a long process actually, but it was uh, pretty, pretty fun. So I was looking for a change, um, I had a pretty different career before and uh, wanted to try something new and I thought, you know, they told me also we're uh, possibly about to start a project, it might be called Street Fighter 4, and for me that was it. I was like, I gotta, I gotta get to Capcom. So what are your duties within the company? What do you end up doing? Is it like, you know, just monitoring the message boards and stuff uh, like that, or...? It's it's a pretty complicated job, uh, and it's under discussion exactly uh, how... Yeah, so that's that's something I'm arguing with uh, a lot of people with right now. But it's fantastic. What basically... I get to work as uh, on the dev side as special advisor to all the fighting games. So I get to go in and monkey with the mechanics, uh, tweak things here and there, make suggestions about different aspects of the game, and argue with the dev team. But we have a great relationship. But Sumasan is a great guy. Uh, his whole team is really smart. Obviously, Onosan on the Street Fighter project and uh, and beyond there. So I get to work on my favorite things, which are fighting games, but also on the community side. You know, we get to throw great parties and uh, you know have events like this, and uh, you know also try and have a the fight clubs are really cool. Yeah, we love the fight clubs and try and have a, you know, an internet site that's that's fun. Now with Tatsunoko versus Capcom, were you one of the leading voices to try to get the game to come to the United States? I think I was the first uh, first person outside of the Japanese dev team to even know that this game existed and play it. So uh, I got to play it at a very early stage during development and was immediately in love with it. I was like, this game is super fun. I mean, they didn't have, you know, half the characters weren't done. Everything was still in process. None of the characters worked right, but I could tell just immediately this is an awesome game. Now, you surprised with like pretty much all the fan turnout considering that you know a lot of people like even IGN had their review where they said you know oh people aren't going to know half the cap half the Tatsunoko characters but you know it's been really good here so far if you can see my pictures. Yeah no I think it's uh, I'm, I'm blown away by this turnout frankly so Street Fighter I know we always draw a great crowd for Street Fighter Tatsunoko is a great fighting game but you know frankly we hadn't done a public event like this for Tatsunoko on this scale we really didn't know what to expect uh, you know maybe throw a party and nobody comes and we sit here and cry. <laughs> but uh, this is an amazing turnout, and yeah, people are going nuts. Now, with the game, was there any uh, kind of characters that you wanted to see that you weren't able to get? We did talk about the Pizza Cats. The Samurai Pizza Cats are definitely one that I remember as well. Uh, the licensing didn't quite work out on that one in time for the game. Um, you know, maybe if, maybe if this really does well, we can do a sequel and work that out with Tatsunoko. Uh, we didn't get the reasons why it didn't work out exactly, but Tatsunoko said it wasn't going to happen, so... Now, how about on the Capcom side? Because I heard that there was a rumor that that uh, Del May Cry, uh, I forgot his name, but Dante. Dante was going to be in it, that was a rumor. Yeah, so they, the team had talked about Dante, there's also a build that has uh, Phoenix Wright, not quite finished, yeah. but, so there's a lot of fun characters, the team had a lot of great ideas, it's just a matter of balancing play styles and making sure you have a good variety of different characters to play, uh, as well as famous Capcom faces. Now, one of the things I also wanted to talk about was, on Xbox Live, one of the top selling arcade games was Castle Crashers, and in a couple months you guys are going to be coming out with uh, Final Fight Double Impact. I was wondering if that game sells well, could we see more of the Capcom beat-em-up classics come to the uh, 
to like the online now? Yeah, by all means. We're we're a big fan of those games. Obviously, with Final Fight Double Impact, we're really trying to preserve that arcade feel. I don't know if you've seen like you got the extra graphics yeah. around the edge. It really looks like yeah, it's like playing in it. Has the scan lines, the whole thing. It doesn't smell like cigarettes, but uh, that's the one that, thing. That's, that's up good. to you. You can light a light a cigarette at home and just let it sit there and it'll be just like your old arcade. Now I have to ask this obviously for my friends because we're big arcade fans. That's why the name arcade focus. And we love the old Capcom beat 'em ups. So would there ever be like maybe bringing back some of the old classics that you do have the rights to? Us? That that really is right now the number one stumbling block for a lot of those games. So obviously games like Alien vs Predator, fantastic beat 'em up. Uh, I love the Dungeons and Dragons game. That's what I was Rover just going to ask. is one of my favorite all-time Capcom games. Um, but it's the licensing is uh, complex. So basically, we need to be able to put together a proposition that says this will be valuable for your brand. You know, dear Dungeons and yeah. Dragons. You know, you're going to be able to make money on this as well. Um, and finding a way. You know, also other people own the Dungeons and Dragons license right now. So it is complicated. But uh, if we can show that there's success on games like Final Fight and show that there's really a market for this kind of thing, I'm sure the doors are be open. Now, if you had your choice to bring back one of the old beat 'em ups, like let's say there was a game called Battle Circuit that came out like a very couple years ago that I loved, would you have like would you say like I could pick one game and which, which beat 'em up would you bring back? Uh, I probably would bring back Shadow over Mastara just because I do think playing four player online co op on that oh, would be uh, mind blowing. Alien vs Predator is one of my favorite all time combo games, yes. so I used to do combo movies in Alien vs Predator. That's why I loved how they did uh, that game because it felt like you were, it was a fighting game within the beat 'em up and yeah. I, I, I forgot the girl's name at the moment. Uh, Kurosawa. Jin, yeah. yeah, Lynn Kurosawa. Yeah. Katsunoko vs. Capcom too. You got to bring her back. <laughs> she would be a great character. Now, obviously, I got to talk to you about Street, Super Street Fighter 4. How hard is it to, you know, balance a game and everything with all the fan input that's constantly coming barraging at you? Um, well, the fans basically we just look at them like everybody else. Is they're genius testers, like especially like as a group because they find things that no R&D department's ever going to unearth on their own. So their input is extremely valuable. It doesn't mean in every case we do what they're asking for. It doesn't mean in every case we're able to do what they're asking for. But we really try and make sure that that's part of the process. Um, and once you get a game out in the wild and actually see it in action, you learn a lot more about it than you ever do in the lab. So we look to try and get it all in there. Not always possible, but as much as we can. Now, one of the things that a lot of fans are complaining about are the addition of the ultra moves that are cancels. What are your comments on that? I think people should really, you know... The game's not even out yet. Yeah, so. cal calm down for a minute, give the game a try, see how it plays. There's some thought behind it. It's not, uh, it's not quite as simple as people are making it out to be, so, you know... Theory Fighter is great from the couch, but give the game a try and see it in action for a little while before you pass judgment. All right. All right. Thank you very much. And also, my last question is like regarding arcades. Do fans now really have a voice in having Capcom bring some of the games back into the arcades? Because I know how they did um, Street, Street, uh, Street Fighter 4 is at Chinatown Fair, right. and it brought in a whole lot of people. And do you think that we could ever see more arcade games coming up in Capcom, or is it kind of like now it's all console now? In the U.S., we don't really have an arcade division anymore. Uh, obviously, Japanese uh, market is a different market, and you know, I personally grew up in the arcades, and they're my, one of my favorite places. Exactly. Uh, that's the feel I try and recreate at a lot of our events. Um, it's really a lot of fun, but it's not as simple as fan input on the arcade business exactly. because we don't have like a distribution it's all, network. It's all the money. You know how it works. Exactly. So you're a big arcade guy. So it does get complicated quickly, uh, but I'm really happy to see him in the arcades. Every time I come to New York, I go to Chinatown Fair, and play a few rounds. Try not to tell anybody I'm coming so I don't get beat up That's too bad. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so Seth, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, taking the time out and talking to me. My and pleasure. And thank you very much for uh, bringing Tatsunoka vs. Capcom here to America. Uh, I hope everybody goes out and supports it because it's a great game, and thanks for coming out. All right. Thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for listening. Nice to meet you.